Welcome back to State of Belief Radio. I'm Welton Gaddy. The Reverend Dr. Susan Brooks Thistlewaite is a theologian and an author with a rare gift for contemporizing timeless teachings. After all, her most recent book is titled Hashtag Occupy the Bible. In the ongoing aftermath of the unthinkable devastation of the Philippines by Super Typhoon Haiyan, Dr. Thistlewaite published a provocative piece. Now, to put Thistlewaite and provocative together is almost a redundancy, but it is a provocative piece. In the Washington Post, it was headlined, Suffering and the Sin of Climate Change Denial. Provocative indeed. Uh, Several conservative websites, which you would expect to be conversant in the language of sin, are up in arms about the very idea that Susan would call this anti-climate change or ignoring climate change a sin. But the measured balance of complicity and compassion that resonate throughout Dr. Thistlewaite's commentary makes for important reading, and I'm very pleased that she's willing to come back on State of Belief again and talk to us about that issue. Susan, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you, Reverend Gaddy. I'm I'm pleased to be here, and uh, I am pleased to talk theology with you. It's It's been over a week since disaster struck the Philippines, and it's been heartening to see the outpouring of aid from around the world. But you go beyond that undeniable good, and I, I want to start by asking if complicity is too strong a word to describe the sin that you refer to in your article. No, no, it's not at all too strong a word. And, you know, I the way this came about, this column, mm-hmm. was that I'm teaching the senior theology class now at Chicago Theological Seminary, and the topic um, of the previous week was sin and suffering. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm going through the classical doctrines and preparing the lecture, and I'm thinking about the difference between natural evil, which is, you know, what people think of storms, bad mm-hmm. storms or earthquakes, or natural evil, lots of suffering results, but it's not caused by human sin. It's, it's part of, um, you know, the, the random effects in nature. And so... And then there's moral evil, which is both individual and then, you know, groups Mm -hmm. uh, whose interlocking sins uh, help to create systems of moral evil. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about um, the the typhoon and what, you know, these sustained wind speeds of 150 to 170 miles an hour, strongest storm on record. And then I'm reading uh, the Philippine government saying... Typhoons are getting stronger and stronger since the 1990s. And you put that together, you know, with the warming of the oceans, which is energy, right, energy. Mm -hmm. And um, we are beginning to have to invent new language, super storm, super typhoon. And you begin to see there's a connection between the suffering of the people in the Philippines and human inaction Mm -hmm. on protecting the climate or human uh, action in continuing to burn fossil fuels, but there's also the denial, uh, mm-hmm. the industry of denial. And so I focused on the denial while also saying, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not innocent in not uh, um, doing enough on mm-hmm. the climate. It's true. I don't have a zero carbon footprint, um, but there's a particular perversity about Con- this continuing to deny the connections, which I think has a relationship, a moral relationship to the suffering of the people in the Philippines. And so as an outgrowth of my preparing this lecture on sin and suffering, I also wrote the column for the Washington Post. Well, that, that's a, a good day's work. <laughs> I want, I want to, to sketch a backdrop uh, uh-huh. against which then I can ask you some other questions. So if you will, I want to ask you three questions with really succinct answers, if you will. Sure. First of all, what is sin? Well, sin is, first of all, you know, missing the mark. If you look at it, how it's understood biblically, missing the mark. So it's a, it's a breaking of your relationship with God, 
but it's also a breaking of the relationship with the neighbor. Some people just emphasize the God-human axis. Or some people just ac- uh, emphasize the human-human axis. Mm-hmm. But it's both. Well, mm-hmm. it's both. Okay, what is evil? Well, now, evil is a word that I think is properly understood as all of that interlocking um, uh, uh, sins. So we mm-hmm. get all the sins together, all our individual sins together, our sins of omission, our sins of commission, and they create these structures, uh, which are more than any individual that's why evil has like a an image mm-hmm. uh the the red suit with a pitchfork guy mm-hmm. right we've got the <laughs> devil but that's because evil is bigger than any one person and it's out you know it's created um um by human beings in their all of their collective failures both to follow god's teachings and also failing each other okay. so and my my colleague mary potter engel Mm-hmm. Um, with whom I wrote the book Lift Every Voice, mm-hmm. which is still one of the most widely used textbooks to teach theology. Mm-hmm. And Mary has a wonderful section on sin and evil in that. And she said, when you put individual sin together, when all of this evil of the collective, we should use the word wickedness to describe the synergy of individual sin and all the collective sin. And she wants to bring back the word wickedness, which doesn't mm-hmm. get used enough. Mm-hmm. That's truly wicked. Mm-hmm. And if, if there were anything that shows how wickedly we are abusing the planet, it is the suffering of people from these superstorms. Okay, now what is moral? Moral vis-a-vis immoral? Well, moral is hitting the mark, is, is you know, living up to the values and teachings of mm-hmm. God. And, you know, human beings do fail at this. Mm-hmm. Um, but immoral is both, as I've noticed, as I said earlier, commission and omission. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's – and the Catholics, you know, you can't beat Catholic theology for really digging into sin. And the Catholics have an additional category, which I think is applicable – I wish I'd used it in the column, actually, uh, an additional category, which they call willful ignorance in sin, uh-huh. where you should know, and you actually engage in trying actively not to know something. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's a wonderful category of sin. How many times do we sort of, you know, I don't, you know like Scarlett O'Hara, I'll think about that tomorrow. <laughs> um, we don't put A and B together and make C. And so... Um, so I think that that um, helps people yeah. understand uh, and that's, why, I, why we can, you know, we can even intend the good mm-hmm. and actually end up complicit in immoral acts. Okay, now that, that's the backdrop against which I, I want to continue the discussion. So how is denial of climate change a sin? Well, denial of climate change is more like this willful ignorance. Mm-hmm. It's, and, you know, this is not just falling from the sky. I mean, there was a two-year study by the Investigated Reporting Workshop at American University uh, that the uh, uh, Koch brothers, Charles and David Koch, through Americans for Prosperity, are funneling money to climate change denial. And they are also funding, uh, there's a little-known pledge in which um, – Certain Congress people have voted, promised to vote against legislation relating to climate change. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, this is um, a complicity in not recognizing, and and therefore, and I have a, a policy section in this. I mean, we have to take responsibilities as individuals, mm-hmm. but we also need to change our policy on climate. And if you are not willing to acknowledge what's right in front of our faces now mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, in climate change, or and I think even worse, global warming mm-hmm. is a terrible term, yeah. because it all sounds like we're going to be wearing bathing suits and going to the beach more often. I mean, what's wrong with that? <laughs> and But it's not. It's violent, and it's abrupt, and it's accelerated. Um, there's a wonderful climatologist in Colorado um, who uh, Hunter Lovin, who uses the phrase global weirding, <laughs> you know, which is just everything is a lot weirder. Yeah. yeah. And um, I've called climate change where the weird things are, right? Mm. Because we've got 
stuff that doesn't make sense. Look at Hurricane Sandy, right? Mm -hmm. I grew up in New York City. I grew up in New York City. We had hurricanes. But this hurricane didn't behave. That's why it was like like other hurricanes in the past. Its nickname was Frankenstorm Hmm. because it just – it was so weird Mm -hmm. the way it got blocked into land. And so – um, you know, that that kind of refusal to take personal action, refusal to take community action, refusal to take um, corporate in the sense of national action. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, uh, what happened uh, with the last uh, um, climate conference in Latin America? You know, right. we had no action out right. of that climate contest. Uh, it was called the world's longest suicide note. Uh, I mean, it was just, it was appalling. I mean, they just yeah. didn't do anything. And so um, it, it, and then 20 feet of water wash over these villagers mm-hmm. in the Philippines. It, Susan, I, uh, m- maybe I am more cynical than you, and that's where this question comes from. But do you really think that redefining uh, the ignoring of climate change um, and calling that exactly what you call it, a sin, uh, willful ignorance, do you think that would really change what happens in the United States Congress? Well, Christian theology, I believe, has been Mm co-opted by um, political forces that want to prevent action on climate change because they want to go on polluting and it costs money to clean up the environment. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's there's no kidding. Um, It's going to cost them a lot of money. And so I'm trying to, as a Christian theologian, I can't fix everything. But one thing I can do is bring not, you know, some new theology that was just invented yesterday for this purpose, but confession, repentance, and change. I'm bringing the classics of Christian theology to this problem and saying, natural evil, moral evil, Mm -hmm. this is moral evil, what do you do about moral evil? You confess, you repent, and you change. And I believe that, you know, each of us contributes a part. The good news is, as I quote from the Pew study, Americans are starting to get it. I mean, the, the public opinion is changing on climate change. And uh, people are beginning to realize and, you know, connect the dots. Mm-hmm. You can't have things like Superstorm Sandy or Superstorm Typh- uh, uh, the, the Typhoon mm-hmm. Ion, uh, and people not go, hey, wait a minute, right. you know, what is this? And begin to see the connections. So, so I believe not any one thing, but I believe you and I, as Christians, need to step up to the plate, and other Christian pastors, I'm hoping, and I find a lot of my Washington Post columns, people email me, end up in sermons. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, encouraging people to, don't don't think you have to take and and, uh, uh, invent an environmental theology, which is a good thing to do. I'm not saying uh, uh, anything against that. With the classics of Christian theology, confess repent and change okay and, I was, and, I, I, and and you can and you know we can do this we can call people to the fundamentals of their faith okay i need a really short answer here but mm-hmm. i want to stand right in the middle of what you've just said and a, a lot of people obviously in christianity uh see sin and repentance intertwined in mm-hmm. our theological language so what would repentance from this sin look like well, uh, I think that we've got to recognize that we have da- – I mean, I, I put those at the end of the um, – uh, and I, I tried to make them very, very brief. Repent for what we have lost by inaction. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, liberals need to stop saying we're going to reverse the effects of climate change. That's another form of denial. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's sort of like, oh, we can fix that. Well, we can't. I mean, it's going to be a thousand years, people estimate, before we could even – begin to reverse the effects of what's already been damaged. We have to stop doing more damage. But 
what we must do is recognize that we have done this and accept that responsibility. That's what repentance involves. The Reverend Dr. Susel Thistlewaite is a senior fellow at American Progress. She is also professor of theology at Chicago Theological Seminary, where I'm sure it's an honor to be in her class. <laughs> And she's the former president of that seminary. Between 1998 and 2008, she served as a president. I think she is a contemporary prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Dr. Thistlewaite is the author of numerous books, the latest of which is Number Occupy the Bible, or hashtag Occupy the Bible, what Jesus really said and did about money and power. Her article, Super Typhoon Haiyan, Suffering and the Sin of Climate Change Denial, appeared in Washington Post, and we will link to it from stateofbelief.com. Susan, you know, I shouldn't feel like we're having so much fun talking about bad things, but I like to talk about these things with you because you bring such clarity and insight. Thanks for being with us again on State of Belief Radio. Well, thank you, Welton, for asking me.